Sunblock is designed to protect you. Could your sunscreen be dangerous? Today, it's a controversial show. There's a growing concern that the very thing you use to protect your skin may cause rashes, hormonal problems, and some even suggest cancer. Now, you use it to cover the largest organ in your body, but is it safe? Dr. Arthur Perry believes some sunscreens can do more harm than good. And sunscreens, which we use for many good reasons, when they're applied, they're applied to the top layer of the skin here. So let me just pretend that I'm doing that. This, by the way, is your entire body. And beneath the skin, there's other tissues uh, that are important. The dermis, for example, and there's some fat there in some people. Then you have blood vessels. See this red tube? The blood vessels are even below that. So the thought is that if you can have a system in your body, like the skin, that protects this skin, and it also protects the tissue beneath it and the organs, these vital valuables you've got deep inside your body, your liver, your kidneys, all the other organs, including the breast tissue, for example, that Dr. Perry mentioned. You apply these sunscreens on top of the skin, and if they tend to penetrate through the skin, which most do, they'll begin to seep into the tissue level, then down through the blood vessels where they're absorbed, and they begin to seep onto your valuables. All those organs, those important things deep inside of you, then are exposed to these chemicals, many of which have been changed by the exposure to the sun itself. And after converting these sunscreen chemicals to toxic materials that are endocrine disruptors, alter these valuables deep inside your body. And when your organs are damaged, that course can contribute to many problems, including the cancer we spoke of earlier. The American Academy of Dermatology and almost every dermatologic uh, society, the dermatologists themselves, all promote the use of sunscreen. Dr. Perry, are you saying that they're wrong? Are you saying that they're missing something? Should people stop wearing sunscreen? No, people should still wear sunscreen. I'm just saying let's stop and let's choose the right chemicals that go on our skin and the right chemicals that get absorbed in our body. Let's take benzophenone. That's one of the most common sunscreen ingredients. It's actually a carcinogen in animals. It's known to cause cancer in animals. Is it proven to cause cancer in humans? Absolutely not. But you know, there's a lot of evidence that these endocrine disruptors can cause cancers. Not proven, but you know as well as I know, Dr. Oz, that where there's smoke, there's fire. You're a plastic surgeon. I mean, there are many other areas you could be specializing in and focusing your passion on. Why this area? Why are you so focused on it? Well, I've been uh, taking care of patients for over 25 years. Skin care is a large part of my practice. I'm very sensitive to carcinogens. There's a lot of cancer in my family. I have a lot of uh, very close family members with these problems. And so I really want to know that the substances that we eat and that we put in our skin are uniformly safe and not questionable. There are safe alternatives to chemical sunscreens. So last night I reached out to the Endocrine Society and I spoke to Dr. Thomas Soler, their representative. And he actually, Dr. Perry, shares your concerns. And I'll quote him just uh, in, in short. I'll put the full statement on our website. Dr. Perry makes an important point. Some sunscreens are known to interfere with hormonal action. and They could plausibly increase the risk of various cancers. All right, back in the old days, you knew exactly who wore sunscreen because you could see the white cream on their body. But then, in response to vanity, the cosmetic industry changed the way sunblock is produced. And some say this change is harmful to our health. But both Dr. Arthur Perry and Dr. Elizabeth Tansy agree that if you think white, you'll get it right. Let me show you what they mean by, by thinking white. I've got a couple examples. If you don't mind, uh, Dr. Tansy put on the chemical sunscreen. You don't seem to mind that. And the physical sunscreen by Dr. Perry. And I want you, to, if you can, to show the audience what happens when you apply. So Dr. Tansy puts the chemical sunscreen on, and it goes on and disappears almost immediately because the chemical sunscreen is absorbed into the skin and becomes active there. Dr. Perry, on the other hand, looks like Casper the Ghost uh, with his white hand. Uh, and that's because the, the physical sunscreen doesn't go into the skin, isn't absorbed, and for that reason, it can't get to the bloodstream, but also it leaves a sometimes cosmetically undesirable result. Dr. Perry, the two kinds of sunscreen I just mentioned, please differentiate them for us. What makes them so special? Okay, the chemical sunscreens are just what I said. They're chemicals, and in order for them to work, they need to get into the skin. We need to put them on 20 minutes before we go out in the sun, and when they're in the skin, they actually get degraded destroyed by the ultraviolet light of the sun. The physical sunscreens sit on the surface of the skin and they reflect the sun. They do what we expect sunscreen to do. They just block ultraviolet light. That, that, that's the white that we're talking about. Those are all the physical ones. That, that's hands you, that people aren't gonna see labels on their sunscreens, right. chemical versus physical. So what ingredients do they look for to tell that it's a physical sunscreen of the type that we're speaking of? The ingredients to look for for a physical sunscreen are either zinc, titanium, or both. Zinc and titanium. Mm -hmm. So it's basically crushed rocks. Exactly. Okay, so that, no, that's what you're putting on your skin. And what makes them so effective? 
They're effective because they are lying on the surface of the skin and they reflect both ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B rays. Mm -hmm. And they're even good for people with sensitive skin. Actually, that's the point I hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. Sensitivities, I, I gather, which a lot of folks do have with sunscreens, maybe less with the physical blockers because they're not absorbed. Dr. Perry, biggest complaint folks have about the physical sunscreens, the ones with zinc and titanium in them. Those are the words you're going to look for, zinc and titanium, right, the rocks. Uh, is this white residue that you have on your hand right now. So what can you do about it? Well, that doesn't look too good, but the newer sunscreens that contain what's called micronized zinc oxide are invisible. So you do put them on your skin. They do block ultraviolet light. They do not get absorbed, and yet they're invisible. They're a little more expensive than this stuff that I have on my hand here. And how often do you have to reapply the sunscreens? Well, this is a point of difference between Dr. Tanzi and myself because the physical sunscreens really don't need to be reapplied unless they're wiped off. Uh, we have several hours, certainly, with those, as opposed to the chemical sunscreens, which the FDA tells us we need to reapply every one to two hours. In fact, one of those sunscreens gets completely destroyed in about an hour, 90% of it. And just for full disclosure, Dr. Perry sells a, a sunscreen with zinc. It's one of the reasons you know a lot about the area. So let me show you all what makes sunscreens different from each other. And again, I, I started off the show talking a little bit about the chemical sunscreen that I applied right here. Again, this is the, the top layer of the skin, the deeper tissues, and all those valuables you've got inside your body, the organs. The chemical sunscreen gets absorbed right through there. The physical sunscreens, those minerals that we spoke of earlier, they're crushed into a paste like this. When you apply it on top of the skin, they can't get absorbed. You can't absorb rocks. Instead, it just scatters the UV rays, as Dr. Tanji mentioned earlier. Nothing gets to the dermis. Nothing gets deeper. So they really can't be at risk when these are applied, as opposed to the chemical sunscreens that theoretically might have some concerns. So let me share with you what I'm going to tell my family after today's show, and I urge you all to do the same. I think we should use physical sunscreen, the white stuff. You're going to look for the active ingredients, zinc and titanium. You can get the rocks crushed really finely to make it a, you know, a little more expensive but less visible on your skin, but that's going to cost you a bit more. And the prices will vary between about 11 bucks and 95 bucks. So the less it's crushed, the more visible it will be, and the cheaper it will be at the same time. And I want you to go on the DrOz.com for a list of sunscreens approved by the Environmental Working Group. It will help you with the decision process.